Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to explain a peculiar kind of problem using what we call a subquery. Let's find an example. Put a thumbs up if you're 20 years old. There's no difficulty in deciding whether to put your thumb, the thumb up or down. If you feel like doing what I'm asking. But now imagine I ask you this different question. Put a thumbs up if you are the youngest person looking at this video. Okay, we'd better put a time limit because, of course, there could always be someone arriving who is younger than you. Put a thumbs up if you are the youngest person looking at this video within a month of it being shown. All right, what would you have to do? First of all, you'd have to wait a month to find out because that depends on who watches it. But if you, even if you do watch a month, uh, wait a month, then you come back and say, do I put a thumbs up or not? Well, you can't decide. You can't, or not on your own anyway, because you have to find out everyone else who's using this. And so, um, how do I write a query that could actually obtain this kind of information? I suppose I'd have to do it in two goes. First of all, I have to decide right, who's the youngest. Okay, once I know this, I might uh, I, I take an envelope, or the, the back of an envelope, and uh, I write down the name of my youngest, on that. Once I know that, then I can pass the message and say, you know, hello Johnny, would you put a thumbs up on this video, please? But this, how do I do this kind of thing in two goes if I'm using a language like SQL? Okay, with a language like SQL, I can't put a thumbs up on the video, so I'd better find a better example. Uh, get me the list of people who are looking at this video who are more than the average age of viewers. Off we go again. I have to answer two questions. First, first of all, what's the average age of viewers? Okay, I ask that question from the YouTube system and the YouTube system spies so much on you that it knows everything, so it knows that. No, it doesn't know that actually. And then... I've got a figure and now I've got a figure I can actually take my list of viewers and get me those whose age is over 21. Oh, this is starting to be a little more precise now. We're imagining that we have a table. Okay, so listing viewers, and we have a username and an age.
but you can see that this isn't a very satisfying um, way of getting our of get, getting our data to do it in two goes. I have to run two queries. First, a query to find out the average age of my viewers. And then when I've done that, a second query to take that average age. And again, when I've taken the average age, find which viewers are over that. Uh, how would I get the average age of viewers, by the way? Select. Average of the age column from viewers. You know, viewers with an S or viewer without one. Let's decide. They're all imaginary tables, but even then, let's get our imaginary SQL right. Uh, how could I turn that to queries to get the result? Then once we've got the result, write it down, copy it, paste it to do a second query and get instead one query. That's where we use a subquery. It's simple, really. I look at this here and this here. What we're going to do is take out this bit, put into its place the query that we use to work it out. So I work this out. I'm going to use some brackets so that we can see more clearly. And I'm going to write here, select average age from viewers. Select average age does it look that difficult I guess the important part of this I guess the important part of this is working out whether you need a subquery in the first place often once you've worked out that the subquery is needed then the rest isn't actually all that hard you can work it out in a couple of goes. First, picking up the subquery. Then when you have decided what your subquery is, you would work on it again. You would work on your main query, which includes the sub. There are some subqueries that are more complicated than these. But that's the gist of it. How do you work out whether you need a subquery? You look whether you need to work out the answer in two stages. Then your two stages are your sub and your main query. Once you've decided on that, how do you work out the correct query? You work out the sub query first. It is the easiest most of the time and the main query afterwards. Now that you've got the general idea, Let's try what kind of subquery we could run. There is our usual emp table. Let's experiment. It's got a salary figure here. I can actually find things like the lowest value of that salary. I have the lowest value for the salary, but I don't know whose salary that is. In fact, I can try and display the name of the person who is earning that. But I get this error. This column is giving me just one result, grouping all of the data together and finding the smallest. While this one has got as many results, as many names as there are rows in the emp table, 14 if I recall correctly. 
and I can't put 14 rows side by side with just one. But I want to know who is earning that lowest salary to do that. I have to go back and pick up this value. Let's put this query aside. It's giving me the minimum salary and now I can read the minimum salary is 800. I'll copy that figure and I can do another query that goes select uh, let's pick up the name and the salary and some other things like the department number of that employee and we use where the salary is 800. I'll highlight the query I want to run. There, the person who earns the least in this company is called Smith and they work in department 20. But this work in two goes, first finding the minimum salary, then copying it and then putting it in here is a little bit silly. And what we want to do is have just one query that does those two things together. I take this here, I cut it out, I copy it here instead. It's not compulsory to lay things out as I do just now, but it's much more convenient. The more complicated a query gets, the better it is to actually see very clearly. I've got my subquery. I can select just the subquery, run it, and see that it's returning me the lowest salary. And I've got my main query or my outer query if you like and the outer query finds all the remaining details of the person who are earning this minimum salary. Let's run this and check that it's working okay. Yeah it's still Smith with their salary. And is that it? We're going to practice a few more of these queries looking into more complicated uses of the subquery. First, instead of picking up just this one salary, let's see what happens if I do where the salary is more than the minimum. 10 rows returned, set the machine to be able to display all of it. Instead of getting only the person who has the minimum salary, I'm getting all of the other ones because I'm getting the salaries that are higher and it says strictly larger. That gets me 13 results, all of them except for Smith. Right, how would you change this query to give me the list of people who are earning salaries that are higher than average? Take a few seconds, pause this video, log in, type this up or grab a piece of paper. A solution. Instead of picking up the minimal salary here, we'd use the average. The function for average is AVG. So this will calculate the average salary, 2069 point something, and this will give us the details of all the employees who are earning more than 2000 and a bit, which is a few there. And it says here there's six people who are earning more than average, uh, which means there must be eight who are earning less than average. Okay, that's not too surprising. I can see that uh, this validates that the figures must be around right. Well, I, can, I can also read it's more than 2,000 and a bit. So that's what it's come to. We've got a solution for that problem. The list of people who are earning more than average. You would know how to find the list of people who are earning less than average and you remember there is a less or equal and a more or equal as well. Will this be any different? Still the same mate. That's because nobody earns exactly 2069 point something pound. A more difficult idea. To prepare for it, we're going to write a query that uses the grouping and having. I'm going to pick up the number of people in different department.
Yeah, that gives me a figure but not much else so what I want is to know which department it is as well as how many so I've got a bunch of departments there's two departments that have five and six and another two that have one and two people in it how can I filter out the departments that have too few people instead of where it uses having okay stop this Give yourself a little bit of time. We need to test how many people, in other words, it's the count column. We want to filter out those with just one or two people, so we want those that have more than two. How could I use this as a subquery to find out information about the details of people who are working in those more numerous departments? So we do a second query. Select e name. What else could it be? Department number. MGR for manager. From EMP, where? Department number. These were departments 2030. It is simpler to write it this way. There's my list of people. People who work in department 30, 20. It would be easier if they are ordered by department number. There, let's order them. But I've done it again. I've done two queries. In the first query, I got some results about the departments that I'm interested in and then copied them, rerun a second query using the data that I had obtained in the first. If I copied the query, the list of departments, where would I put it? Cut that. The subquery ought to fit here. Select the name, the department number, the number of the manager from the M table where the department numbers are some of those we found earlier. That is those. Okay, it's not terribly clear. Where's my bracket gone? There. Bit of indenting will help understand what's going on as well. There. And the order by at the end is still there the same. I hope queries don't get much bigger because if I have to scroll to be able to see a query to the end, it's going to get difficult to understand what goes on. No, I can enlarge this. I'll do that now, you never know. So now we pick up the details of employees whose department is one of those departments where there's more than two people work. We'll do that by department number. Will that work? Hopefully. Oh, too many values. What have I done? The department number is one of those department numbers. But my query here is selecting two columns. I want a list of department numbers, not a list of department numbers together with the count of how many people are there. So I take out that count. Now this query is going to return a list of values that are those department numbers that I want to feed to this outer part of the query. So I can use a subquery with equal but I can also use a subquery with greater than and less than and so on. And if my subquery is returning a list of values, I can use it with in. Now we have revised having. I want to show you another use of a subquery together with having. It's very comparable to what we've done before. Next exercise, we're going to try a subquery, but
but apply that to a department. Now to apply it to a department, wait, select, we can do things like a department number, for example, from the M table. And we can group the information by department. Good, that's a bit of a silly query, but it reminds me of the group by there. I need the highest salary cost in the department, so I need the salary cost in the department. Sal, no, the added up salary cost, that will be some sal. Does this work? There's my sum sal, which is the highest. The one way highest is apparently department 20, so I get I could do max here. Ah. If I do max, I only have one value. There. The highest of all the sums of the salaries. But I need to use this in a subquery to be able to get which department it is and details of that department. Use it in a subquery. Could you use this with where? I'm doing a sum here. I'm organizing this information by department. Because it is grouped by department, and I'm looking at groups of data by department, where will not work. I have to use having. I have to group the data first. and use not where, but having instead. Oh, having what? <laughs> having some sal equal there. Okay, it's department number 20, but it the question was get the department details. If I wanted to get the department's name, and the department's location, I need that from the depth table. To get it from the depth table, I need to join depth to emp on the usual thing which is dept dot depth no equal emp dot emp no emp dot depth no now that I've done this I need to chase all the places where there's depno because depno is in is ambiguous now. So I need to chase all of these and put um, dot. Uh, any other place? Group by um, dot. Any others? The subquery is not the main query because it is not the main query doesn't matter I'll put temp anyway it's from the emp table emp.depno won't be wrong I might need to group by both emp and depno 
I bet no, I need to group by empno, by uh, emp.depno, but also dname and by lock, because I need to group by what I'm not counting. That's in the main query where I'm resending back all these. In the subquery, the subquery can remain quite small. Okay, let's rerun this one more time. Check the subquery, run the subquery to see what's going on. It returns that figure that tells me the highest salary wage in a department. Having will pick up that department that has that highest salary wage and all the rest of the work here. We'll find from the two tables the number of the department, its name, its location, and we're repeating that highest salary wage. Okay, a query that was some work, wasn't it? But again, we developed it in stages, looking at the subquery first, then growing the information that we wanted to that we wanted to gather and adding clauses to our query until we've got the result we wanted. Last of these, and possibly the, the most difficult, subqueries are giving us a roundabout way of doing an outer join. In the last video, I showed that it was possible to do an inner join, not using a join and an on close, but using a where statement instead. And here it's a little bit the same. Thanks to subqueries, we have a roundabout way to do an outer join. Let's see. Find the employees that do not work in a in a recorded department. There is one case like this here, yeah, and it is King, who's the company president. This looks like some you know, fiction from the 1970s or something. Well, is it? it is a fiction from the 1970s because this data was created then as training data for people who were learning Oracle. So we've got one row of data here where there is an employee without a department. We need to find that employee. One way to do this is to use an outer join. Select everything from AMP, full outer join, depth on AMP dot AMP and no equal depth dot depth and no where bah where depth dot depth and no is null right the outer join will give us all of the data showing what have I done here showing that there is no department at all for all of these people who have a department number. Ah! It's depth and note that we match to depth and note. This again. Okay, there is only one. If I don't select the is null part, I have lots of rows of data president who has no department, plenty of members of staff who have a department and their department in the, in the AMP and DEPT table are the same. And then there is a department that is staffless somewhere in there. There it is, there's a department that has no member of staff. If I use is null, I'm selecting only that person who has no department. How can I find? Now, I said that with a subquery, I can find. 
I have an alternative way of writing the same kind of uh, the, the same kind of thing. We're going to forget about the join and instead basically we want people for whom there isn't a department. There is a special clause for we can't find such a thing which is not exist open a bracket and here we put a subquery and we run select all the data from the depth table where the department number is the same as the department number from the empty table. Okay, what does that subquery do? It will pick up those department that it will pick up that department data where it's the same department as the department for the employee. When we're looking for people and we're looking for employee information where there is no data in the department table that matches. So where the data does not exist. Let's run this. I don't need to select it. Let's run this. Ah, it's not exists with an S. There, that has returned all of the data from the M table for which there's no corresponding data in the depth table. I can also do it the other way around. Pause the video, see if you can actually create the other outer join, the one where we are looking for department data that has no matching employee data, so departments that have no employees working for them. That would be select. I can look at the one above here and do that almost as a kind of mirror image. In fact, I'll copy and paste it. Copy that. And paste it here. Select everything from departments where not exists, select something from AMP where it's the same comparison between the two. Select department data for which there's no employee data that matches. I think that is it. All I needed was to swap those two tables. Department number 40 operations is in Boston and has no correspond and has no employees working in it. Two very similar queries except swapping those two things to get two different ideas. You might recognize the left outer join and the right outer join from looking at outer joins before. Okay, there's quite a few different uses of subqueries here. We finished with some that were more difficult than others. I hope you find this is a clear format. Let's display all of these in a compact list. You should be able to apply these ideas to extract statistics and analyze data. Thank you. Stay well.